constructors and cars. So, then, then the talk is going to be on teachers, constructionist, and deconstructionist learning. And I think, personally, I'm going to be particularly interested in this Please. idea of deconstructing the learning that's going on. So for me, that's the thing that I'm going to be particularly interested in. So um, can I pass over to Valentina and Gerald? So now I would like to tell that we are three authors and we three are here. So Gabriel is uh, my PhD student. We are from Vilnius University from Lithuania and Gerald is sharing uh, the previous constructionism in Vienna. So we are small of all officers are here. So now our presentation will focus more on several several ideas, but it's like how to involve teachers to solve uh, to get the understanding of uh, informatics concepts uh, by solving tasks and uh, in using uh, methods, constructionist and deconstructionist methods. So, but I, at, uh, at the beginning, I would like to share s s short memories, some some reflections from 11. It was already out in informatics in uh, uh, in Thailand, as as you maybe some of you are familiar. So Olympiads in Informatics, and we have pr uh, produced a journal Olympiads in Informatics in Problems. And it was uh, president was Kanchit Malaybongs, and was 78 countries participated in in uh, Pattaya City. So now I'm uh, we are going to our presentation. So main questions are how teachers may learn in a constructionist and a deconstructionist way, and how can we support teachers to engage in uh, uh, constructionism, and how uh, can they start to think beyond a technology-centric view? So this is main question that we would like to share with you in this our short, short presentation. So this is uh, from uh, we took this picture from a previous uh, constructionist conference from. Uh, uh, Boychev, Paul Boychev from Bulgaria papers that he explained about the uh, deconstruction and this I think that this is very very nice picture that you can understand very easy what is deconstruction de de or deconstructionism when you uh, disassemble some something and then you put in another way. So we, we like this idea and then you and we use this idea in different way how to introduce informatics concepts for teachers. So now we made this actually. The main, ta the main uh, goal is concept, informatics concept or computing concepts that we would, would like to, that teachers should understand, or uh, not of the teachers, uh, the students should understand, but at first we should introduce teachers, so the trained teachers. So, and we can do this in how to learn this concept. So our uh, goal is to learn by using tasks, by solving tasks. Uh, we can do in this uh, by like learning in constructionist way. It means that we learn concept and solve tasks. But we can wait in another another way. We can learn like we present task. It means that we are reading task, reading uh, and try to find which concepts are behind in this uh, problem and then to make to create new tasks like new tasks and when you're creating something then you learn concept much better so this is more formal definitions that you can read so uh, what we mean by constructionist approach or method and uh, what we mean by, like the constructionist approach it's more deeper is, uh, in, in our paper it's explanation so, and so, uh, so uh, teachers can learn in both ways, or learning through this one. one way or another way. Uh, if we put more precisely, like uh, when, uh, we are, when we are talking about tasks, because task is a, uh, such concrete tools, that, tool, maybe some concrete items that we, we uh, give to teachers to uh, practice and to get involved in uh, uh, concepts. So this is we can start with, as you see, this concept. Then we need 
when we creating task, we need some story or something to put on on this on concept. And then we need to also we um, some pictures to attract, especially students and especially primary school students. Then we it would be very good to have some like gaming or animation interactive, especially again for primary school. But all all students like something like moving or dragging or something. And then we get. We, we can get the tasks, like parameters are parameterized, that we get new tasks, and, and, uh, and, and uh, sometimes we are connected with new, with new concepts. Now we should, just when I'm talking about tasks, so it says we are thinking about these tasks that we are using in uh, Bebras or Viva Contest. So I should spend a few minutes to introduce what is what is Viva Contest, and that we can get familiar with uh, Bebras. Uh, um, task, what, what, what they are. As you see, this is it's international task-oriented challenge. Now the change is not only contest, it's challenge, but it means it involves many activities with teachers, and uh, we focus not only on contest or competition, but with, uh, with uh, working with, uh, with teachers and several, several some other activities. And also we focus on informatics and computational thinking. So it's learning by contest growth on attractive tasks. So here's some very little information that our aims is main aim is to motivate pupils to engage in informatics topics and to solve problems using informatics methods. So this is this is main main aim of uh, of Bedras. Uh, challenge. As you see, participants, there's uh, five groups, so starting from age uh, eight uh, and uh, until until uh, they leave school, it's, uh, senior, seniors. These countries they are different, sometimes using different na names, but it's uh, usually it's five groups. And as you see, there's this men, at the moment we have this Bebras member countries, it's uh, 36 in the last year uh, contest, and uh, this is on the international website. Here is some numbers behind statistical data. Uh, and we are this, this year we are expecting more countries to join. Uh, the is growing, and uh, so the last year in November, so we we had more than one million participants, actually one point three million. And here is some statistical data by countries. So this is, you see that uh, the most uh, France has the, the most participants is over 300,000 participants, and the second is Germany and some other countries. So no task. So task is very important in this, uh, with this presentation. So people should solve the tasks are short and they should be attractive. Some tasks are interactive. Some tasks are open-ended, some tasks are multiple by choice, and uh, they should have uh, a concept, uh, informatics concept behind, and uh, because main main aim is to attract, to stimulate, to motivate pupils. It means that tasks really should be attractive and have good uh, good background, good uh, have informatics concepts. So here I will show. You. Uh, two examples of what we mean by that as tasks. The first one is, as you see, this is a, um, you can read here, a short explanation that uh, we need to make like pictures by, uh, to, to change only one feature of, of, of this face. Uh, this task is proposed by uh, Japan. So, and this is actually Japanese beaver face. And uh, so this is an uh, interactive task. The uh, students should drag in the order and to arrange, because last is already given, but you should arrange in the order. And this is uh, the second task, is maybe more connected uh, connected to um, uh, like programming, as you see it's more for seniors. So this is uh, some explanation what's what we mean with some uh, what is view, what is what we have this, uh, some comments. And uh, here is multiply choice. That is, you can uh, ask which which one uh, is this description or sequence of commands can describe this uh, which operation sequence would generate this thing. So 
from you see that is uh, uh, we do not require any pro pro pre knowledge so it means that everything should be explained the students can just solve by and I, now I would like to ask Gerald to continue with to go deeper into the classes. Yeah? Okay. That is the beginning of the Bebras. In fact, Valentina was the inventor of this contest. And we had already conversations about the contest before you started with your first contest. And at that time, uh, you told me you want to have this very short task with just two or three three, four minutes to solve it. And besides, how can we do this? And uh, now I'm in in this project since 12 years, and I know how we can do this. Yes, we cannot do everything in a task. We can just have an S, we have to think when we solve the task. It is, uh, it is a contest of thinking. And why, that's why the contest is now called Bebra's Challenge on Informatics and Computational Thinking. So it is the thinking important in this contest. And uh, first we, we gave a lot of attention on the task and the students, so the task fits to students, so we had to break down the concepts in a way that students can understand. And later on we found out that the people who create the task are also learners. So we have not only the students, but we also have the creators of the task. This is called teachers in our talk. The teachers are the creators of the talk creators of the tasks and, and while creating the task and thinking about it, they are learning how to teach and how to create better tasks. And they learn also about computational thinking, of course. They have to, to know what are the thinking processes to solve the task. So, I, I want, want to show what, yes, this is about what uh, students should learn about computational thinking. Also teachers learn about computational thinking by creating, but teachers learn also about creating tasks. So I want to give you an example of how teachers can create tasks. I have a lot of experience in, in this because I do it also with my students. I am also in teacher education at my university, and uh, in one course, I give the problem to create Bebra's tasks. So, so uh, and I give you an example. the whole computer only with only with x or uh, uh, x or not zero. <laughs> but in binary operation it is one zero. <laughs> so it, but anyway uh, this was the idea. Yes. <laughs> and it uh, started like this. The idea was the idea they had the students at the beginning to make a story, and the story is about a tinted glass. If they have tinted glass, a clear or a lightly lightly tinted, 
and you put it, you overlap it, two light ones is a light one. The light and the lightly tinted is a lightly tinted. If you look through both of them. And, but, but only if you have lightly tinted and lightly tinted, then you have the dark, darkly tinted. Oh, this is like a tube, isn't it? Okay. But anyway, you see it during the construction of the task. It, it is not X or encourage the, the students who create the task to proceed. If they have an idea, they can proceed. And afterwards, we can rethink. We have this deconstructionist approach at the end, and rethink what we have done and if it was the right way. And then they have, for example, a lot of pains here and ask what is the outcome if you overlap it. But, but with this solution we are not really satisfied. This is intermediate. Maybe it is not really funny to solve, maybe you don't know why you should do this. And then this was an original idea, not from my students, it was from Canada. And then someone had the idea, oh, if you have glasses, where, where you have glasses, in which context? And they so, thought, oh yes, boats have glasses, the ship have, has windows, round ones, windows, and if we look from the side to the boat, then we, we have this white one, and we have a corresponding one on the other, from the other side, and look through these windows, and if we look from one side to the ship, the ship looks to the left hand side, and if we look from the other side, it looks to the right side, and in an intermediate version, this anchor was invented to show where's the top of the ship, but it's not necessary anymore, but it's still here. <laughs> um, and, and this was not really the final version, uh, because it is not written how to put in the solution to the computer. It is an online contest to put in the solution. And in the final version, we had, in the answer, we also had a yacht, and one can put click on the windows, and each click changed the color of the window. And so they could put in the result of the, of the task, and so it was an interactive task at the end. Okay. And the deconstructionist process is to think why it is informatics. We, we give this information to, uh, after the contest to all participants and to the teachers, and, and the teachers have to think about it. For example, in this task, you have to rethink, is it really X or, or is it uh, something else? Yes, it is maybe, it depends how we interpret the color of the windows. If it, sometimes it's an or, sometimes it's an X or, or the addition. Addition is, in my opinion, most natural way to say this is a two, the dark window. Okay, uh, if you want to know more, or if you like to, to solve tasks, come to our workshop in the afternoon, you learn much more about creating tasks and fabulous tasks. And to summarize, uh, the teachers learn a lot, they understand the essence of the involved concepts, they learn how to choose a story for the children, uh, and they can rethink if others understand these stories, this task. Okay. See you maybe this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joan. That was a good haircut. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any questions for our presenters? Yes. Thank you. I'm interested in what you mentioned about tasks, that some of them are open-ended. 
Uh, I wonder how you can make open-ended tasks in uh, automatically evaluated contests, because I think this is one of the limitations of the contest, that the learning needs to be open-ended, and the contests, they are automatically evaluated. I don't know, but can you comment on this? Yeah, I can. I can answer. A special tool, we call it Webber's Lodge, for making interactive tasks. It's like template-based, but some countries are doing with flash technology or some, it doesn't matter how you do, but we're still working on the technology side. So, an open-ended is, at the moment, we have like to ask some to, uh, to put number, so it's easy. Uh, to, to check or to put letter or to put it's not like real you can couldn't put sentence and you need to correct or so so it means that you should count it's in easiest way I don't know maybe you have something more of this open ended but usually it's like letter or symbol or or, or, or number yes it is not really open in your yeah, sense yeah. it is for sense so. But it's interactive task is really more interesting. For example, like if you have a graph and you need to show way shortest, you can click to show it the shortest way, or just to pick some uh, something you should collect. For example, like some bonus or something. So this is more in, more more interesting and open ended. Maybe it's like between. you are you are right. With this. It's really if you need to have this really open ended. So it's, really then you couldn't have automatic testing. Great question. Yes. So, so you use this, do the teachers also use these tasks uh, when they're teaching students in the classroom? Yes, uh, I know this from Austria, they are using it also uh, as motivation for the, to, to introduce a new side, key knowledge. So it, each task can be solved uh, at this, uh, without learning something in advance. This is a big advantage to so the can The teachers can introduce a new sub, new topic. Do you have a database in advance? Yes. We have a database. This is open, open, uh, freely available uh, in all countries, uh, in all these languages. And you can look at the Bebras homepage uh, where you can find links to all these countries. And each one and many countries produce brochure, and you can download from a website, international website, webras.org. Just click on flag, for example, with tasks and explanation with how to solve them and what, which concepts are behind. Why this informatics? Okay. Any other the policy to try to do this in general to make them also. Awesome. Supported by computer. Yes, this task. Uh, uh, all papers are uh, contests on computer, right? But it is also possible to print out some tasks. Not all of them. The interactive. Some of the interactive tasks are not solvable without interaction. But most of the tasks you can also print out. And I know some teachers that use it also the printed version. They can prepare at home and, and, and put it the table to the students and they can fill out uh, the result. The subsidiary question to that was really, do you have good ways of implementing these so that you can reuse, is, it, is there a lot of work involved in actually computerizing all these examples? Yes. Or do you find ways of doing this? Yes, this is, this is true. It is a lot of work uh, also to create the task. There are many, many hours involved in, in all these countries. And also to finalize this interactive version, it's, it's a programming work. Yes. yes. And that's carried on in the countries. You don't have to come this to the country. Yes. Uh, some countries work together. Yes. And we have this paper lodge that can be used by all the countries. Uh, but uh, but they have different systems uh, in, in the countries, so they have their own have to do their own programming work. I think I would be very interested in that challenge. And also, each country translated tasks that they are using in own language, so it's also, also it's work for translation. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to thank our speakers for a very interesting talk. And,
then our final speaker for lunch. Paper is designed for construction, uh, construction, sorry, computing, learning through experience.